can't keep doing stuff with, with, without, it should be a fair trial, that's my right. I shouldn't be able to do things without my knowledge. And then pass it off to the jury like that's fair. They deserve to know that too. All right, just some quick context, guys. This guy here is the defendant in the Daryl Brooks or Wakasha Walk. Ooh, I'm gonna just say the state of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks. Daryl Brooks is the uh, alleged suspect in the um, Wisconsin Christmas parade incident where an individual rammed a SUV into the parade and deleting about six people, deleting and injuring approximately six people. All right, Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the reason documents to being are being put on the I don't consent to being called that name. Are because this court indicated it would limit the movement of the parties due to your custodial status to keep things fair. And I merely asked, how did it get there? Sir, do not I'm interrupt not me, I'm or you will I'm forfeit your right to, to know be how present it got there? in this courtroom. So you hold me in contempt? Me. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm going to make a record. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm not answering your questions. So then you're not holding me in contempt. Do not interrupt me again or you will go to the other courtroom. Under what lawful law? All right. He's interrupted me once again. Um, we're going to clear the courtroom. He's being disrespectful. I'll make a record once he moves. Unless you can promise me right now that you let me make my record without you interrupting me, sir. I honestly think that shows weakness. Now, this is not... Uh one incident in the courtroom, right? This trial is going on about 10 days now. And uh, throughout the case, Daryl Brooks, who's the suspect I just showed you guys, frequently does outbursts, frequently objects to uh, different uh, evidence that's submitted in the case without any basis on his objection, right? But uh, he's represented himself, right? He's denied legal counsel, and um, he's pleaded not guilty to uh, the charges that, that he's charged with. Um, but he's showing like all this, you know, disruption, constantly going back and forth with the judge because he disagrees with their rulings. And I think this judge has been more than patient, but I think it just shows that when you give people an inch, they take a mile. When you say, oh, I'm going to hold you accountable. But then if you promise me you won't do it again, I won't hold you accountable. This is what you get. You gonna make your record? You can make your record. Then please don't interrupt me. Don't hold me in contempt. I've never said any such thing. Removing me for the courtroom, Your Honor, is essentially holding me in contempt. All right. No, you're forfeiting your right to be present under Illinois versus I Allen. Didn't, I didn't forfeit anything. I will, I'm going to start talking, and if he interrupts, then I will close this courtroom, and he will be taken to the next courtroom. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the court made some pretrial uh, rulings related to whether there would be – they can stay in. I haven't closed it yet. He's not interrupting me. Whether the parties could – approach the witness stand and I did that because you're in custody and I'm not going to allow you to approach the witness stand while in custody. Um, that is why uh, various precautions have taken place uh, to limit, frankly, that from happening. Um, throughout this trial, um, there was one instance at the very beginning of the case where I allowed the state to approach a witness. I corrected that. That hasn't happened since. We've had bailiffs take items up to the witness stand, or the items have been given to the witnesses, or they've been placed on the witness stand. That's proper. There is nothing uh, wrong about that. Nobody's trying to pull a fast one over you. No one is doing something that's not permitted uh, by this court, or frankly, under the rules of decorum and courtesy or the presentation of evidence in this case. Frankly, from my perspective, sir, your attempts and your comments are to try to dig in at this jury and to somehow create doubt about the presentation of this case or the fairness of these proceedings uh, without the party, meaning the state, having an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. I've 
taken the jury out. And yeah, I think, you know, this guy, if he's found guilty, I mean, obviously he's going to jail for a long time. So I'm thinking in Brooke's mind, he has nothing to lose. You know, he's representing himself. And I've been following this, tr this trial. And throughout the trial, he's just been trying to throw out legal jargon that really doesn't make sense. That's not really uh, applicable to his case, right? And uh, he's trying to find little loopholes to, to try to get the case thrown out, right? Trying to say that the court doesn't have the right to hear this level of a case and et cetera. And I, in my opinion, he knows he's going to lose. But he's just doing things like this outburst to stall the process as long as he can. Because, I mean, I guess he, he figured if he gets a, a public defender, then it's guaranteed the public defender is going to, you know, not do much for him. He's going to be found guilty and go to prison for a long time. At this point, to admonish you that any further mumbling under your breath um, or not recognizing when I uphold or sustain an objection that I will take as a disrupting interruption meant to disrupt the proceedings. I'm not holding you in contempt. I'm well aware that that's one of my options. I choose not to do it for the reasons that I've stated on the record previously. All right, you can forfeit your right to be present at any point in time during this trial by your conduct under Illinois versus Allen. When it is disruptive, when it uh, does not follow the simple rules of courtesy and decorum. I draw your attention once again to SCR chapter 62, um, which has been previously provided to you, which is under the statute there. Um, these constant mumbling and interruptions for the during the proceedings. I haven't made a record of them today, but I will now. Started at 9.01, then there was five at 9.02, right. three at 9.00. We'll fast forward some of this. She's just reading... Um a transcript of the outburst that uh, Daryl Brooks made today off of a sheet of paper. Comments and statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again when if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, well you might as well remove me then, because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut what you're saying. I didn't interrupt you. I let you make your incorrect record. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. Now, the, the reason why she's not trying to respond to him is when she gives a response, and in the past throughout the case, she's given responses to uh, the defendant's concerns about the fairness of his trial, but he'll consistently go back and forth and then it just delays the proceedings of the case. You see what I'm saying? And it's the same thing that suspects do on tra traffic stops too. What did I do? Why you pull me over? Officer already explains it one time and it just, it's always a, a, a rebuttal. It's always the sum suspect always has something to say back and nothing ever gets done. So that's why she's just trying to move the case along because this is a stalling tactic that people do when they know they're guilty. Says, and, okay. and I'm not stopping you Through from doing your that. behavior, you're not going to delay these you, proceedings and, today. I'm not trying to delay continue. the proceedings, so I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You don't so know what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm the jury out. I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your voice. It's because very I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. At me. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. I'm making a record of what's accurately. You're being making done a record of incorrect statements. That's what you're doing. You're not making a record of Mr. not Bros, being. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back out. You're advising me to be quiet. Is you telling I'm me to be quiet? You to be respectful when the jury. Are you comes telling out? me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising you. Okay, thank you for correcting. I wonder how many judges would allow a defendant to talk like that in the courtroom. Because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't tell nobody else what to do. I'd appreciate we're all you. The, we're all the adults in here. I've never told yelling, you to sir. do anything at all. Sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I, I would appreciate if you would ask me. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't nobody, ain't nobody going to talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have Same mentality that people who resist arrest have. I have a problem with doing what you ask me to do, not tell me. 
Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record. But somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive. Of, uh, come on, man. Stop. Just stop it. Jury's right. coming out. All right for the jury. <laughs> Not going to work. Yeah, he's gonna lose, man. Him out bursting like that, it's not helping his case. The way he's acting right now just shows that he has problems with conforming to standards, to order, to basic fundamental Thank you, rules. Everyone. Please be seated. Statement continue its examination. That's why he's in the situation he's in now. I believe we're on exhibit 117. Yes, we have 117. Madam Clerk, would you please turn the display back on? And we ended with the death stare. Well, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section box below. Do you guys think that the judge is showing a little bit too much latitude when engaging with the defendant here? Like allowing him to go back and forth and make frequent disruptions? Do you think she should be more aggressive? Um, or do you think she's doing an A-OK -okay job and doing the right thing, being patient, taking her time with this guy? Even though he's showing complete disrespect to the state of Wisconsin for what he did and to the courtroom. I could be wrong about this, but I don't think I am. Let me know what you guys think in the comments box below. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel for more content. If you can only do one, please like this video, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out.